The UN has again asked Chinese authorities to, to take, quote, strong remedial action in its western Xinjiang region. Here, despite denials by China, up to a million Uyghur and other Muslim minorities have been detained for the past few years, ostensibly to fight terrorism. Beijing insists most people have been released and that they were in, quote, re-education centres. But the UN has found otherwise. Less than a year earlier, an assessment found credible allegations of torture, ill-treatment, violence and detention. And last week, the UN repeated its call for Beijing to take action. As my office highlighted a year ago, the concerns in the Xinjiang UER require strong remedial action by the authorities as per our recommendations. I also remain troubled by the continued detention of human rights advocates. The UN is troubled, but not China. It has instead redoubled efforts to push tourism in Xinjiang, all in line with President Xi Jinping's call to officials to strengthen positive publicity. The region's tourism bureau has earmarked a budget that's more than double the pre-pandemic levels and a string of new projects, including luxury hotels, have been announced. The aim is to paper over China's treatment of the region's Muslim minority Uyghurs. Tourism is booming in China's Xinjiang province. Visitors come to enjoy the bazaars of Kashgar, an ancient city long home to Uyghur Muslims. Tourists, mostly Han Chinese, can pose in traditional outfits or enjoy mutton pilaf. All apparently state-approved aspects of Uyghur culture. President Xi Jinping himself visited last month. In a speech there, he said, in the process of Chinese-style modernization, we will better build a beautiful Xinjiang that is united and harmonious. The government strategy of pushing tourism and, and pushing its propaganda narrative um, is leading to a disnification of Uyghur culture, which basically uh, means its destruction uh, except for an outer shell. Outward displays of religion are banned in the region. Muslim men can't grow long beards. Veils for women are forbidden. In cemeteries, Muslims are not allowed to kneel, read the Quran or even pray. Human rights group accused China of systematically eliminating the practice of Islam in the region and of imposing Chinese culture. The government will promote dance and singing and outward presentation, but any sort of a deeper spiritual meaning, for example, spirituality or, or the use of Uyghur language, especially for the younger generation in school, etc., all of that is being eradicated. Detention camps are also alleged to be part of the government's strategy. Since 2017, millions of Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities have reportedly been sent to sites like this. The Chinese government calls them voluntary vocational training facilities. Reports have surfaced of widespread abuses, including violence, rape and political indoctrination. In July this year, a team of AFP journalists reached one of the sites. They were told not to film and asked to leave. China says the centers were closed in 2019, but AFP's team said that at least 10 sites appeared operational. And researchers say China's detention program is actually expanding. China has now shifted from uh, the campaign of mass internment to a longer term strategy. However, uh, many of those Uyghurs in the camps have been sentenced to long prison terms. They remain disappeared. Many others, hundreds of thousands, have been shifted to forced labor. In this village called Yarkand, the detentions were so widespread that a number of houses remain abandoned. AFP reported similar scenes in three other villages nearby. Up to half of the adult males may have been rounded up. Here too, the team was chased by men with shovels and were ordered to leave. The fate of thousands of detainees is still unknown. A UN report last year found China's actions in Xinjiang may constitute crimes against humanity. But in Xinjiang's new tourist hotspots, life here appears carefree, as they celebrate a local culture that is being methodically eroded. 
And joining me now for more from Munich is Dolkun Isa, president of the World Uyghur Congress. Mr. Isa, does Beijing really think that promoting tourism in Xinjiang will paper over its treatment of Uyghurs? Well, uh, good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, is a recent wave of tourism indicates this attempt to showcase the propaganda view of the, uh, the situation. Actually, situation has not changed. Situation is still dire. Camps still exist. Uh, last six, eight years, we have uh, we haven't still have a contact of family member. Still, millions of children are separate their family. Still, Uyghurs are suffering in the forced labor facility. Women are suffering in the forced sterilization policy. So, but Chinese government, now Beijing, uh, wants to change the negative image of the region by simply pushing a positive narrative that things are improved, that we were living in harmony and stability. So just to use all this for the propaganda tour. Now, Beijing had said some years back that most of the people who were in court uh, re-education centers have been released. I want to know from you if that is true and what is the latest situation in Xinjiang? It is not true. China, time to time, change the narrative. Until beginning of uh, 2019, China uh, denied everything. But after the growing up international pressure, and the, this issue is one of the critical issues of international media, then China and the change in narrative, yes, we have a camp, but it is not a, uh, a, tr uh, a concentration camp. This is vocational training center, we educating people. but. There is a hundred thousand Uyghur professor, professional uh, football player, singer, uh, teenagers, or and the, every kind of people. So these people no need vocational training. Then China changed narrative, saying, "Oh, we're fighting terrorism, radicalism." So no, China is a really difficult situation because and a lot of international pressure. This this crime, this atrocity crime. It is no continue hiding by the Chinese government. That's why China used different of uh, uh, different of uh, 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 its method, strategy, and change narrative. So, but reality, nothing was changed. As I said, still millions of uh, children separate family camp still exists. At least seven, eight years, I personally, of, uh, I haven't contacted the first fam family member. Still, uh, I cannot access. And the 100,000 Uyghur who live in Germany in the exile still have a contact with a family member. So uh, even also recent some uh, international media journalists uh, visiting, for example, including right. Association right. Uh, 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 French Press, indicates this report also many hosts in the Yerkan area, source, of, uh, uh, source part of the Turkestan, and the uh, hosts are still unoccupied. Streets is empty. And the journals are followed everywhere. Yeah, they go lo localists. Camps still exist. Yeah. What is Beijing's long-term plan for Uyghur and other Muslim minorities in Xinjiang? Ch Beijing is, uh, particularly Xi Jinping, is a long-term uh, aim is Uyghur completely eradicated. Eradicated Uyghur identity. This is the main purpose of the concentration camp. You know, China's government towards the Uyghurs, Tibetan, Assimilation, discrimination policy has a long-term policy. So right. we are, but the Uyghurs right. and Tibetans, we are trying to save our national identity, cultural identity. Chinese mm. Communist Party cannot mm. accept the diversity. You know, Chinese Communist Party, Chinese uh, Chinese uh, government saying, you are being Chinese, you right. lost identity, or right. you will be died. This is the policy of Chinese government. We leave it there for the time being. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mr. Dolkun Isa from the World Uyghur Congress. Thank you so much, sir.